be a very long time. <laughs> could you um could you tell everybody um about Courtney and what Courtney had and then like talk share about your book about being brave and the scared. Being brave and the scared, yeah. Uh yeah. so my daughter Courtney, um this December will be home with the Lord for five years. So it's her five year anniversary this this year. Um of her ho heaven homecoming as we call it. Um, so Courtney, when she was five weeks old, she was born perfectly fine. Everything was fine. Uh, she was our second child. Uh, and when she was five weeks old on the day of her baptism, she had her first grand mal seizure. And while she was being baptized, we thought it was just because the water was cold, but no, there was something else going on. So she ended up having two more that day and we ended up going to the emergency room during a seizure. And so we spent a week in the hospital in the pediatric intensive care unit and, um, basically for the first six to seven months old uh, of her life, her, her diagnosis was seizure disorder origin unknown, which basically means they have no idea why. Right. Because every test came back negative. Like they couldn't find a focal point. They couldn't find anything. Um, and then she, when she was seven months old, about seven to seven and a half months old, they found what they called hips arrhythmia, which is a very specific type of EEG pattern, um, brainwave. And they thought they had the answer. So they had this, they thought she had something called West syndrome, which is a seizure disorder that affects mostly girls. And so uh, it showed up two more times in her EEG. And so they said, let's try this medication um, because we think it'll stop the seizures. And so we talked to the people that, families that had tried it and it worked. We talked to families that had tried it and it didn't work. And um, so we tried it. Well, it's a, it's a medication that's given uh, gradually over time and you give it by shot in the thigh. So I had to get qualified to give her a shot. So I did all of that, her chubby little thighs. And um, by day three of giving this medication, everything went sideways. So her brain swelled, her body went septic, her kidneys and her liver started to shut down. What we found out was Courtney's allergic to steroids and there's a steroid in this. So that's one of the main components, but she had passed all of her pre-allergy tests. She had passed all the tests, but her body just couldn't take the overload of it. So she lost her sight due to this medication and all form of development stopped. So she never surpassed seven to nine months in development. So her, most of her disability and um, came from the allergic reaction to this medication. So it was very hard for us because of course we, as her parents were trying to help her. And here we were the ones that we felt at the time were responsible for harming her. So um, that was a very, very difficult journey to go on. Um, what she did in our life was kind of, she was this earthquake in the middle of our life. So everything that was wrong in our marriage, uh, individually for my husband and I, um, that we had been setting aside and putting aside to deal with this crisis came bubbling to the surface. And so it was hell unleashed in yeah. our house and on our marriage for probably the first 11 years of our marriage. And so, um, what, what do you think got you through those 11? Well, there were two things I really think that were critical. Number one, I was raised Catholic. Jerry was not, but I was, and the mother's guilt of Catholicism, like you go to mass, you know, or you go to hell. That was pretty much how I was raised. So even though my heart was not like I went to mass because we went to the same parish my parents went to, and I did not want that phone call on top of everything else right. that like, where were you? Why weren't you at mass? Like I didn't need to deal with that. So I went and I think because I had the habit of going um, and it felt uncomfortable not to go, even though my life was a complete disaster, my marriage was a disaster. I was dealing with addiction. Jerry was dealing with addiction. Everything was wrong. Mm -hmm. We still went. And so that habit as a child, you know, we didn't question the going. We just didn't like, we sat there and I think received, you know, the grace of that. And that sort of somehow God worked in that. He remained in all of it. Right. And the second thing we did was we really, we didn't quit. It's kind of the same thing. Right. We didn't give up. We didn't give up on Courtney. We didn't give up on each other. We didn't give up on our family. And we were willing to do all the hard things to make it better. You know, there comes a point where the pain of remaining where you are is worse than the pain of making a change. And that was the crux in everything. We both came to a point 
We're remaining where we were as individuals, as a married couple, as a family. The pain was too much. We, we wouldn't have survived it. And so we had to make a change. And so yeah. we did. And it took a long time. I mean, everybody, I get a lot of comments now, now that I've written this book, Be Brave and the Scared, How I Learned to Trust God During the Most Difficult Days of My Life. And they're like, Mary, your marriage is so great and your family is so wonderful. And I'm like, you know, I want that. And I, my answer to that is, do you want the 31 years that it took to get here? <laughs> exactly. That's kind of a situation, you know? I mean, I know everybody wants to be in a good place and a, and a healthy place, but right. it took 31, 31, that's three decades in case you're wondering, to get to where we are now. And we still have to work at those individual things that, that cause um, stress on us. Uh, I, you know, I deal with um, an addiction to food. Um, I praise God I've been healed from my eno emotional connection to food. I know it probably doesn't look like it. I just happen to love it. I happen to love to bake. I love to feed people. Yeah. Therefore, I will never, ever be a stick figure of a human being um, <laughs> because I just, I love food to me is love. Yeah. And so, but the punishment that came with food, the self punishment, I have been healed from. God is so very, very good. Uh -huh. and, but I have to work at it. Right. When I get into those emotional times, you know, where the stress is high, you have to work at disconnecting yourself from that. My right. husband, praise God, has been walking through an addiction to pornography and he has been healed of that in that he no longer goes there. He, he but it's a daily struggle. You know, pornography yeah. is a different addiction than any other addiction. I can walk away from food. I can walk away from drugs. I can walk away from alcohol. Pornography is visual. It stays with you for the rest of your life. For the rest of your life. We can each call up an image. We can each call up anything. The moment if I say, oh, remember that movie we watched there? Boom. I can think of it. So it is a constant guarding of the mind. So we have to work in our intimate life to maintain that dignity and that protection, which for us is St. Michael the Archangel and St. Mary Magdalene. We invoke any time to protect our marriage bed when there is going to be time of intimacy. I mean, it is an, it's an active prayer life. The rosary, right now we are personally in a 54 day rosary novena. Oh, so awesome. like seriously, some things are shaken loose. It's <laughs> like, you don't mess when you call Mary's army to battle you do not mess. She don't mess around. She just. <laughs> the what, lady day, has, what day are you on? We are, we're still in, I think we're almost to the end of petitioning. So okay. you do 27 days of petition and then 27 days of Thanksgiving. And we're not even through the petitioning part and things are like <laughs> dropping. And I'm just looking around going, okay, well, all right. So if that's happening, then do I change what I'm asking for? Or is yeah. that part of yeah. it? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's a powerful, powerful, That's so great. I think I, Jerry said, he goes, I think we're just going to keep this on rotation for the rest of our life. <laughs> I'm like, now, okay, I'm not right. sure I can handle you, that. But if you already pray the rosary every day, like I think you can easily just add it in there. Yeah. Right? Just add things, just add yeah. things to it. But, um, we <laughs> yeah. were praying very specifically for a specific intention and man, woo, it's like when yeah. we do the Marianne doer of knots novena. Just get out of her way. Just get out of her way. <laughs> that is so great. That's so But no, we just, um, prayer. Prayer is good. Uh, yeah. Knowing your faith, you know, surrounding yourself with other people that um, are walking that faith with you. Um, isolation was a big thing when I was, um, when Courtney was younger. So um, you know, we were by ourselves a lot. Yeah. And uh, we were in crisis a lot. And so the one prayer that I always had that I remember the first, it was, I think it was pretty much the first prayer I learned was the Hail Mary. And even to this day, like I had to have some medical tests done a year ago and I'm in this MRI machine and I'm claustrophobic as nobody's business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am praying the Hail Mary and sweating, like just, <laughs> and I've got to keep my body still and everything's fine. But I mean, the whole time I'm just like, don't leave me. I'm not opening my eyes or I will totally start to panic and scream. Right, right. But you know, she just remains. And so yeah. for us in that crisis time with Courtney, especially, like I said, the first seven years of her life, we just, we went to what we knew and we stayed there. We didn't get fancy. We didn't get, we didn't start all these new things. We just stayed with what we knew. And that was our lady.
But you are, you are so strong. Like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like by year four, she kind of like, okay. And there, ha there are probably many moments, right? Where like, okay, I'm just done. Like, oh, every day. Are you kidding yeah. me? God. Every day, even now. I mean, she's no longer physically with me. Um, which is hard. It's, it's hard because I, I, for 22 years, I physically cared for her every knee. She could do, she was like a baby her whole life. So the day she went home to God, I got fired. You know, I lost my job. So it took me a while to figure out, okay, like I know how to do this thing. Right. And I know how to do it really, really well. Right. So like now, now what? Now what? You know, like you now have, what? You help so many people though, with what you do, like all over. Yeah, I, I just want them to know they're not alone. You know, yeah. Jerry and I were talking, my husband and I were talking last night. And he knew I was coming on to pray with you this morning. Yeah. And, and he's like, he goes, what do you think it is? And I said, I just want people to not, I, I want them to know they're not alone. I want them to know that God remains no matter what crisis they're in, in this moment today, that God is with them. He right. is not leaving them. Right. Um, and all they have to do is ask. It's just an ask. It's like, I'm drowning. Save me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, exactly. Reach. It's just that. It's just that. It's just that. It's it's just like Peter when Peter was walking on water, he kept his eyes on Christ, and the minute he took his eyes from him, mm -hmm. down he went. Yeah. And it's just that reaching up, saying, "Dang it, I did it again. I yeah. need you." You know, it's like yeah. uh, Courtney's novena. We used to call uh, the Divine Mercy novena was big in our life, and that yeah. whole idea of Jesus, I trust in you. Right. Right. That's right. the ask. Jesus, mm -hmm. I trust in you. Mm -hmm. Fix it. Yes. <laughs> you know, like, like, please, Jesus, fix it right now. And the fixing was never what we thought it would be. It, it was never a physical healing, the mm -hmm. side of heaven. We knew that wasn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. We had an experience I write about in the book where mm -hmm. we were in Lourdes, and it took us four years to figure out what that meant, that, that experience when we were there. God is very, very kind and gentle when he waits for mm -hmm. us. But once we knew it changed everything. You know, once you know the plan, you just go, you dive into it. And we did. And he just continues to show us. Um, and Courtney continues to do her job. She continues to do her mission. She yeah. continues to inspire and encourage. And she's a tremendous intercessor. Um, she's so good with the practical things, the cars and the plumbing and the <laughs> just... She's so good with that because Always that was room for you. the consternation of our life was something with the wheelchair ban or three yeah. months before she died, our plumbing, you know, was right. uh, the, our, our sewer lines were cut through by yeah. construction. So, um, <laughs> just, oh. it's insane. It's yeah. insane. So but she's really well, good that way. She comes that, through in a clutch, my girl. <laughs> so. for me. That girl. So. Would you say, though, do you believe in this whole idea that, like, God gives you what you can handle? And oh, yeah. He's way too confident in my abilities. Way too <laughs> like, confident. <amazing>. Like, <laughs> the pile on is just, I'll, there'll be days, you know, people are like, when you say, you're like, Mary, you're so strong. No. <laughs> through Jesus Christ and only through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right. Mary is a large cake pop, okay, right. <laughs> of smushy flour and, and butter and there is no structure to this cake, all right? It's just a pile of frosting and wonderfulness. And you're just like, I don't know what you want to do with it, right. but you're going to do something. Right. And he just he just keeps speaking confidence into it. Like, I know you got yeah. this. We're good. Mary, you know, and it's almost like Jerry says, it's like God's sitting up in heaven and St. Peter's next to him. And he looks at St. Peter and he hands him his beer and he goes, Pete, hold my beer. Watch this. <laughs> and then he just starts going. And you're like, wait, what just happened? What's happening? What's going on? That's what it feels like. But to me, and I just, a lot of the times I just laugh. I just am like, right. you think I can do this? Right. Are you crazy? Right. That's pretty much what my relationship with the Lord is. Like, are you crazy? <laughs> are you crazy? Right. right. And right. Jerry will still look at me and he'll just look at me and he goes, no, he's omnipotent and omniscient. Yes. Crazy is not part of it. And I'm like, I think he, I think he's, I think he's been hitting the, the hooch. I think, <laughs> I think it's crazy. 
but oh, we just do what he asks us to do. And, right. and he's going to give us the grace. There's a great quote by um, St. <laughs> Francis de Sales who says, he, either, he will either shield you from the suffering or he will provide the abundant grace right. to meet the suffering. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. And that is what my life has been since yeah. it, since court, the earthquake of Courtney came into it. Right. He will either shield you from the suffering mm -hmm. or he will provide abundant grace to start to go through it. You know, it's, we believe that we are an Easter people, right? We live in the resurrection. We live in the hope of the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens before Easter? You don't get to the resurrection without good Friday. I know. I know it's true. And that's just life yes. and it's hard and it's not fair. And it's, a, yeah. you know we're alone and we're under attack and we're being persecuted and our kids are being persecuted and and you just don't know where to go mm -hmm. and as venerable uh, blessed um, blessed fulton sheen says you go to your knees and you stay there yeah it's true right so um so your book um i have to run because i have to drop a, a kid off at school here but um we can i'll put it up for everybody but amazon yeah, Amazon, Ave Maria Press, Barnes & Noble, wherever books are sold. Okay. Yep. Right. And it's called, you guys, Be Brave and the Scared. But we'll share it here so you can just swipe up and, and get it. That'd be awesome. Um, thank you so much, Mary. I'm going to see you in a few I weeks. I know. I'm so excited. In a few weeks, we get to be together. <laughs> yeah. I get to hug you in person instead of I virtually. Know. Yes. It's like